All right. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Volume good? All right. Um, welcome to PLMW. My name is Amal Ahmed. I just want to start by introducing the other organizers. So they are Robbie Findler, right there, whom you've all been exchanging tons of email with, I'm sure. <laughs> you all know him. <laughs> and that's Atsushi Igarashi over there. Um, so I just wanted to say um, a couple of words about PLMW um, before I introduce Kathleen. Uh, so the Hopefully we've lined up a, a whole sequence of talks here, which are, some of them are technical in nature, some of them are mentoring uh, talks, you know, to sort of try to give you an idea of the breadth of topics that are covered at ICFP. A couple of them are more tutorial in nature, hopefully to help some of you who are undergraduates get a better sense of the field so that you have some sort of background, you know, better background going into some of the talks you're going to be seeing at ICFP. Um, and Kathleen's going to be talking a lot more about that. Um, I just wanted to say a, a couple of things about, uh, you know, how to sort of get the best experience out of PLMW and ICFP, um, one of the things that we would strongly advise you to do is um, get to know people, talk to people. Um, so two categories of that, you know, um, there are, look around you, all of the people in this room, um, make friends, uh, maybe find a small group of people that you make a plan with that when you go to ICFP talks, you're going to uh, get together with them afterwards and maybe discuss the talk. This might really help you get a lot more out of your few days here. Um, and also us, you know, the organizers, the, the more senior people, the professors, the speakers. Um, during all of the breaks, we will all be around and we would love to talk to you. You know, it's the reason we're involved with all of this. We, uh, so come up to us, talk to us. It doesn't have to be about technical things. It can be about really anything, you know, your grad school experience, life, whatever else. All right? Um, we're not scary. So with that, <laughs> um, I'm going to introduce Kathleen Fisher, who is currently a professor at Tufts, and she's going to be starting us off with um, a welcome to ICFP talk. Kathleen. Thank you very much. Welcome to ICFP. My job is to welcome you here and to uh, invite you to enjoy the full week of time at ICFP. As Amal said, I am a professor at Tufts University. Last year I was general chair of ICFP, which means that I was in charge of organizing absolutely everything uh, about the conference. And this year all I have to do is show up and, and give this talk. So I'm also a member of the steering committee at this point. The steering committee is the group of people who oversees the operation of ICFP from year to year and tries to make sure there's continuity. And uh, I think after ICFP I will be chair of the steering committee for a year. Okay, so what exactly is ICFP? So on the slide is a Wordle of, uh, that was created by taking all the abstracts of ICFP papers from 1996 to 2015. I don't expect you to be able to read all of them in great detail, but one of the things that comes out in looking at these words on the slides is the breadth of topics that are uh, available at ICFP, and that's one of the reasons why ICFP is in fact my favorite conference of all of the conferences that I get to go to. It has, it's kind of a soup to nuts conference, everything about functional programming, but all of the stages of the pipeline for functional programming. So everything from the, you know, the theory of functional programming, which we see here with uh, types, and then there's proof, um, logic up there, so the, the theory, and then design of functional programming languages, applications of functional programming languages, implementation of them. So kind of anything that has anything whatsoever to do with functional programming is here. It's not just the theory, it's not just the implementation, it's really quite a broad range of topics, and I really like that diversity. Plus everybody's really friendly in this community, so it's another nice aspect of this particular conference. Right, so these are another view of the uh, the topics that go in ICFP. So these are were created automatically from the abstracts of ICFP from 1990. 
2006 to 2015, and an LDAC algorithm from David Bly, formerly at Princeton, now at, at uh, Columbia, automatically grouped those papers into categories and uh, found the words that were the most descriptive of those topics. And then uh, my colleagues and I came, came up with the topics. But you can, it goes from everything from managing state and lambda calculus, program rewriting, uh, contracts, parallelism, verification, abstract machines, again, showing the diversity of all the topics. One thing that's particularly interesting is this one, which is verification, that you can, sort of the horizontal axis is time and the vertical axis is the prevalence of that particular topic in that particular year. So verification, we can see, is a topic that's really been increasing in ICFP over the past couple of, past uh, 15 years, whereas parallelism is the one above it that has kind of the, the curve that's shown that uh, it was really popular and then it was really unpopular. And then it was really popular, and then it was unpopular again. And I, I think from looking at the proceedings that it's going to tick up again. So for some reason, parallelism is a topic that uh, varies in time. Right, so ICP 2016 by the numbers. So it's three days, but of course you know you, that starts tomorrow. There's a whole bunch of satellite workshops uh, that happen before and after, so the whole event is more like six days. There are going to be three invited talks at ICFP. The first of those is on TensorFlow by Martina Body, who is at Google now, uh, previously at Santa Cruz and Microsoft Research and SRI, and not SRI, um, uh, DexCERC. So TensorFlow is a domain-specific language designed to make it easy to build uh, deep learning neural net kinds of applications. So things that have to do with automatic translation or visioning or captioning pictures, lots of really cool stuff. And Martin is a very good speaker, so I strongly encourage you to go to his talk. Then the next talk is Finding Bugs in JavaScript by, she's right there in the back, Suk Young. Uh, JavaScript is a really challenging language because it's super, super dynamic. Uh, you can create programs and then run them all at compile, all at runtime, which makes it really hard to analyze statically. Statically means before running the program. And she's going to be talking about uh, a toolkit that she's built and work that she's done to make that easier. And then Dan Lakata is going to be talking about homotomy type theory. Uh, homotopy, homotopy type theory, sorry, <laughs> is a kind of a cutting edge of type theory at the moment. We're really focused on taking what equality means very seriously. And Dan is one of the, the best people for translating the esoteric part of homotopy type, homo, wow, <laughs> homotopy type theory. There, good. Um, so I encourage you to go that talk as well. So for ICFP this year, we had 118 submissions, which is roughly ballpark for the last few years. And of those submissions, the program committee accepted 37 papers. They'll be presented in 12 technical sessions, and each of those papers will be given a 25-minute time slot, which means, in theory, the speaker is supposed to talk for about 21 minutes, 22 minutes, and leave the rest of the time for questions. And then the topics of this year's paper are not divided into sessions by topic areas, but looking through them, the topics that are covered are compilations, contracts, domain-specific languages, foundations, garbage collection, parallelism, program analysis, types, testing, and verification. So very consistent with the Wordle and the topic graph that I showed you a few slides ago. Uh, and we will have in PLMW various speakers who are talking about many of these topics in advance giving you a, a bird's eye view of kind of what to expect in some of those topic areas before you actually go into the sessions. Right, so probably just lis listening to that list of topics uh, is making you feel like, oh my God, how am I going to survive three full days of listening to technical talks? I'm, my brain is going to explode, like Calvin's brain here is exploding. So, indeed, if you just willy-nilly go to all the talks at ICFP, your brain probably will explode, and it's not a pretty picture. Um, and so, like, you know, old hats totally do not go to every single talk. In fact, the, the more senior you are, I kind of think the fewer talks most people go to. Not all. There are some senior people who go to many, many talks, but most pick and choose. And what I'm suggesting to you is that you also pick and choose. If you don't pick and choose, what happens is you might go and sit in every session, but your brain is going to shut down after a while. And then it's going to be the case that you only get to hear the ones that you randomly happen to hear before your brain shut down. Whereas if you strategically pick which ones to go to and then have the discipline to only go to those, you actually will get to listen and think about and have some chance that the content goes into the brain instead of just kind of passing right through. 
Um, so don't try to listen to every talk. Be strategic about it. So how can you be strategic about it? Well, there's a printed program. All of the abstracts, all of the papers are available on the web. So what I would suggest that you do is go to the program, go to the website, look at the titles, look at the abstracts, look at the institutions, look at the authors, and see which papers are the most interesting to you. And then make a list of the ones that are the most interesting to you. And of those papers, read the abstract, read a little bit of the introduction of the paper, so that when you go to sit in the talk, you already have have some idea of what the paper is going to be about. That will make it so that you are able to understand and listen a much higher fraction of the content than you would be able to if you just went in cold. And then afterwards, write down, just jot a few notes in your notebook or on your computer about the talk. What was good about it? What did you like? What was bad about it? What did you hate? What is missing? Like one of the skills that you develop over time as a researcher is reading not just the, the narrative that the authors of the paper want you to read, but the, the blank space, the, the, the negative space of what are they not talking about? Because that's where the next interesting research problem will come from. Not the narrative that they're telling you, but the narrative that they're not telling you. It's like in art, where you focus on the positive and the negative space. What's already been done is the positive space. What hasn't been done is the negative space. And as a researcher, what you need to start doing is looking at that negative space. So when you listen to the talks, try to understand both what they're telling you and where the limitations are of what they've done. Also, be, feel free to write down what's confusing, because if you think about and try to capture what's, what's confusing about this, that gives you a heads up or a, uh, a chance to then go figure out where, you know, how to find out answers to questions about what was confusing. So if you write down what's confusing, and if you happen to run into the speaker, you can say, I didn't understand this part. Or you could go back to the paper, and if you know what you thought was confusing, that might help you clarify what was going on. And then when you're not listening to talks, what are you doing? So it shouldn't be that you're just sleeping or just sightseeing. You should be networking. You should be talking to other people in the conference, either uh, researchers who are at other institutions who you want to meet or your fellow students from either your institution or the people here at PLNW. The goal is to, to meet a lot of other people. And often that hallway track of people who are not listening to a particular talk is the most interesting track of the conference. Right, so as I say, networking. So this is a graph showing all of the authors of ICFP papers from 1996 to 2015. Each of these, each person is represented as a single dot, and each line represents two people who've co-authored a paper together. So one of the things that I'm sure you can't see, but which I will tell you, is that there are almost no dots that aren't connected to something. Our field is very collaborative, and so part of becoming a researcher is building up a cohort of people that you do research with. And you can see in here, People collaborate with each other like crazy. I really like this one too, the kind of perfect connected shape. <laughs> it would be nice if kind of these people talk to some of the other people every once in a while. But, uh, but very connected. And people come to ICFP from all over the world, which is why ICFP itself rotates all over the world. So this year we're in Nara, Japan. Next year we're going to be in Oxford, Cambridge. Last year we were in Vancouver, British Columbia. And the years before that we were in Copenhagen, we were in Boston, and we were in uh, uh, Gothenburg. That's it, Gothenburg, <laughs> right? So ICFP travels the world so that uh, each year an ICFP researcher has a one in three-ish chance of being able to not have to travel a long way, and a two in three-ish chance of being able to go to some really cool place in the world and see nice, uh, nice sites and really like, the same interesting people that over time become your friends. So it's like every year you get, a, you get to go sightseeing with friends in some really cool place. So right now you don't, you don't know tons of people, so that friend part isn't true. But if you become a part of the community, it will definitely be the chance, the case that you will get to go every, every year and see really cool people that you really like. Right, but you're not yet in that position. You're in the position where you're the new kid on the block. And you know, being the new kid, particularly when it feels like everybody else already knows each other, is, is uh, kind of difficult. And that's part of the reason why we have this mentoring workshop, in fact, is it give you a chance to, to meet some of the luminaries in the field and meet each other so that you're already feeling like you have your feet on the ground and are welcome before the whole thing starts. So networking, what suggest suggestions on how to go about making connections. So one is be aware and consciously think about going and meeting new people. Meeting new people is always difficult, never the easiest thing in the world, but um, that's what this meeting is for. So set a goal of I want to meet you know, two new people, four new people, and uh, by, by choosing to set that goal in advance, it makes it much more likely that you will actually do it than not setting the goal. 
and you can think about this, like, who do you want to meet? Is there like somebody that you've always looked up to, their papers really impress you, or you're thinking about going to grad school at a particular university, is there a person at that university that you really want to meet? Kind of make a, a wish list of people that you would really like to meet while you're here, and then think about how can I go ahead and meet that person? Uh, there are lots of strategies for that. You can get, you know, talk to us and, and get somebody to introduce you, or go on the web and find their picture and go self-introduce. Um, so when you do that, you shouldn't just go up to them and, and stare at them blankly. Right? You should be able to uh, say, "I'm so and so. I'm at such and such an institution. Uh, I'd like to, you know, I, I have admired your work, or I, I'd like to know more about your institution." Practice having a couple of talking points about what you like to work on or what aspect of functional programming you're particularly interested in. It might help if you know a little bit about their work. Like, I really liked your work on on uh, JavaScript or whatever you know about their work. Um, don't interrupt conversations in progress, right? If they're already talking to somebody, don't go and just like insert yourself. Um, it's very normal in, in, in kind of conferences as you have people talking and you, you walk up and you just stand near them. It's like saying, I'm in line to talk to you next, but don't interrupt their conversation, let them finish. And if they're busy um, and they tell you like, I, I'm in the middle of a conversation, can you come back later? Be polite and, and go away and, and come back later. Um, and don't spend all your time talking to people you know. It's very, very easy to only hang out with your friends, um, and, but at the moment, your, your purpose here is to meet other people from other institutions. So even if your institution sent a cohort of lots and lots of students, don't spend all your time talking to those people. Right, so there's a lot more to ICFP than just the main conference. So, uh, for example, there's a whole bunch of social events. All of this information is in your printed program, so you have references to it. So, Monday night, there's a welcome reception, and at the welcome reception, there are posters from the student research competition. So you can go and see those posters. Each one of those posters is authored by a student, many of whom are attending this particular workshop. So it gives you a chance to see what, what students are working on. That's at 6.30 in reception hall one. Then Tuesday night are two different events. One is the programming language mentoring workshop. It's today. Perfect. So I had the wrong information. Makes more sense because so the mentoring, mentoring workshop is is uh, tonight. So it gives you a chance to meet each other, and it's at Fujin, and Fujin is described in the packet that they have. We will later provide information about that reception for tonight. <laughs> Okay, so first thing tonight on your dance card should be going to the PLMW uh, reception dinner at Fujin. Tomorrow night is the welcome reception where you can see the posters for the student research competition. You should go to that. Tuesday night, there's no conflict. It's the conference banquet and the SIGPLAN awards. So attendance, you need a ticket for that, and students do not automatically get a ticket for that. Uh, we ask uh, senior attendees who aren't using their ticket to turn it in, and we try to make tickets available. So you should check in with the front desk about getting tickets to go to the, uh, the conference reception. Then on Thursday night is the industrial reception. That's uh, run by the organizers of the CUFP, which is Commercial Users of Functional Programming. There they often talk about uh, companies that use functional programming and possible jobs. And then at the very, very close of ICFP week is the farm uh, reception. So FARM stands for, uh, I can't remember what it stands for exactly, but it's basically art and functional programming, so music and other kinds of art forms. And they often have a live uh, demonstration of some of the functional programming music production pieces, so it's, uh, it's very entertaining. I recommend that you consider that as well if you're still here, and that's at the Beverly Hills Live House. Then in addition to ICFP, there are a whole bunch of other workshops. This is one of these workshops. Then there are other workshops. I know you can't read this. So I'll just tell you more or less what's on the slide. So there are workshops that are focused on specific functional programming languages. So for example, there's one on scheme language that's happening today. There's one on Haskell that's happening on Thursday and Friday. There's one on ML that's happening on Thursday. There's one on Erlang and OCaml. There's one on Erlang and there's one on OCaml that are both happening on, on Friday. And then there are workshops, and the Haskell work Implementers Workshop is, also, is happening on uh, Saturday. And then there are workshops that are focused on particular kinds of techniques. So for example, today there's the higher order programming with effects and the type driven development workshops. And then there are workshops that are focused on particular domains or people who use functional programming for particular purposes. So for example, on Saturday there's the commercial users of functional programming talking about use cases of people who've used functional programming in the real world and their experiences with that or the functional art, music, and modeling design, which is what FARM is. So that's using functional programming for art. 
then in addition to workshops, there are tutorials. These tutorials are in-depth dives into a particular topic. Uh, if you re register for a tutorial, they often send you information in advance asking you to load software and bring your laptop. And during the tutorial, you actually get your hands dirty working on a bunch of different topics. Uh, this is the list of topics for this year. There's always an interesting collection of tutorials to dive into, usually taught by the people who built the systems in the first place. And then there's the student research competition that I mentioned earlier. So it's open to ACM student members, both undergraduates and graduate students. People who want to participate in the SRC submit 800 word abstracts in advance. And the winners are given funding to come to the conference and present a poster at the opening reception. That's what's happening on Monday night. There's a, a panel of judges who goes and talks to all of the, the poster presenters and picks three undergrads and three graduate students who are then asked to give a talk to another panel to judge the quality of the talk. And the top, those 10 people are given awards in the closing ceremony of ICFP. They get cash prizes and they get to advance to the finals of the ACM uh, uh, Student Research Competition Grand Finals. So basically there's a ton of stuff going on during the, the week here. If you are admitted to uh, this particular workshop, we get, many of you got funding to come here. And in the future, PLMW uh, really only funds each student to come to one PLMW uh, mentoring workshop. So if you want to come back to ICFP, there are other ways to get funding to come besides PLMW. Some of them are here. So you can participate in the student research competition. That will help pay your funds to go to ICFP in Oxford. You can uh, participate in the student volunteer program. So student volunteers help run all of the conferences. And if you are a student volunteer, that uh, helps pay for some of your expenses in attending. Your advisor should be paying to send you to conferences if you have uh, content in the conference, so a poster or a, or a paper. And SIGPLAN also has a PAC fund that helps provide funding for people who have papers in the conference. So there are other sources of funding to help you come to ICFP in the future. Right, so uh, final words I would say is, you know, don't feel at all surprised if you feel overwhelmed by uh, all of the content and all of the people that are here at ICFP. Uh, basically everybody feels overwhelmed uh, from time to time, so it's completely normal, it's nothing wrong with you, it's just that's the way it is. Um, particularly as a beginner, it's very easy to feel overwhelmed because in addition to all the technical material being roughly new to you, right, the technical content is not designed to be understood by new people to the field, it's designed to be understood by current researchers and, and basically peers of the people doing the writing the paper. So it takes a while to build up enough background knowledge to have new papers be uh, something that uh, isn't overwhelming at first. And you don't know very many people yet. So that's part of the point of this particular workshop is to allow you to get a chance to meet your fellow students and some of the, the senior people in the field so that you feel a little bit less like, oh my God, how did I get here and how do I survive the next week? Um, so yeah, so I want to extend to you all a really, really warm welcome. We love that you're here. We want to have you have a really great experience at this ICFP and continue to do research in the field and join us uh, in the long run for all of our traveling around the world and our love of shared love of functional programming. So thank you very much for your attention. I think I have time for a few questions. Questions? Yes. I don't know. What is the tutorial? Other questions? Yes. It shows nothing. So what you should do is go to the front desk, uh, which will be staffed all day today, and ask Carol Mann or Annabelle Satin, who are there, to straighten your situation out. And they are uh, marvelous with such things, so they'll be able to, they will be able to help you. Yes? Yeah, so no, you can choose to go to a particular talk, but if you know you're going to go out in the middle of the session, you should sit someplace where it's easy to leave without being uh, very disruptive. 
and there's a person gives the talk and then there's applause and then they take questions and then there's applause and moving during one of those two applause sessions because everybody's kind of distracted by the clapping is the least obstructed you know is the um, the polite way of coming in and out so like don't sit front and center in the middle and then you know get up and the, the next speaker will feel kind of disappointed if you do that but if you sit at the back in the corner then you know getting up and leaving is, is no big deal so it's fine as long as you do it unobtrusively Yep. My, my question is, you said positive and negative. So does it mean that there are actually unfriendly <laughs> so, so some conferences are less friendly than others. Um, some academic conferences, there's a, a, a style of interacting where the questioners want to make themselves look smart by making speakers look bad, um, which doesn't really happen here. I hope my my uh, the speakers and the questioners will will uh, keep my words honest this time. I mean, in general, sync plan conferences are friendly and supportive. Um, so, I, I, yeah, but but here is a particularly I think warm and friendly uh, environment. I think part of it is because functional programming has been um, kind of on the outskirts or not the like super mainstream topic, and so people who are here choose to be here because they really love the topic and finding another person who really loves the topic is really exciting and so that's my personal theory so you know other people in the room who are more senior who are equally senior might wildly disagree but that's my personal assessment why ICFP is particularly friendly the other speaker the other people can weigh in on this topic as uh, as the day goes on if they if they wish i think we are all ready for the next speaker so thank you very much for your attention good luck and enjoy your week